Have you ever wondered whether certain English words are synonymous and can be used interchangeably? Do you want to know the difference among these sometimes confusing words? If your answer is yes, then you've landed on the right channel. In this video, we're going to talk about part one of clarifying English terminologies in relation to pandemics. Coming, Coming up. up. Hey, welcome to my channel called The Improve You 10 Times, where I publish videos for your personal development. I'm Dr. Q and I share tips on how to make yourself better every day. If you're new to this channel, click subscribe and hit the bell button below so you're notified when I have newly uploaded videos. Number, Number one. one, pandemic and epidemic. The word pandemic comes from pan, which means all, and demos, which means people. In the study of health sciences, a pandemic refers to a global disease outbreak. Three conditions must be met for a pandemic to start. One is that a new virus subtype must emerge for which there is little or no human immunity. Two, it must infect humans and cause illnesses. And lastly, it must spread easily and sustainably, continuing without interruption among humans. In world history, a pandemic is a rare event, but a recurring phenomenon. Take for instance, the following pandemics. HIV AIDS pandemic, 46 million. Flu pandemic, 1 million. The Asian flu, 2 million. These details show that a pandemic occurs over large geographical areas, usually worldwide, and affects a high proportion of the population. An epidemic, on the other hand, usually refers to what is happening in one country or only one region. The word epidemic comes from epi, which means upon, and demos, which means people. In 430 BC, smallpox killed more than 30,000 people in Athens, Greece. In 541 AD, the plague of Justinian killed 50 million people in the Middle East, Asia, and the Mediterranean. In 1334, the Great Plague of London wiped out 25 million people in Europe. In 1519, a smallpox epidemic killed between 5 and 8 million of the native Mexicans. In 1633, smallpox reached Massachusetts and some 20 million people died. In 1793, Philadelphia was struck with a yellow fever epidemic that killed 10% of the city's population. It is noteworthy to mention that a pandemic flu is not the same as the seasonal flu. By the way, flu is a clip word for influenza, from Italian language which means an outbreak of an epidemic applied specifically to an influenza epidemic which began in Italy in 1743 and later adopted in English as the name of the disease. Number, Number two. 2. Cure and Treatment A treatment improves a patient's condition and thereafter the person's quality of life. On the other hand, a cure would completely remove the disease from the patient. Cure, therefore, implies there is a certainty that a medical condition will not be present after a medical intervention. The word treatment is used in healthcare to imply a process to manage the disease or disorder and improve outcomes. As such, treatment is a process that looks at other underlying risks that may contribute to one's medical condition. So take medication if a doctor feels it's necessary, especially if your symptoms are severe and if medication is available and effective. A number of antiviral drugs help prevent the seasonal flu, but not the pandemic flu. Antiviral comes from the prefix anti, which means against, and viral, which means caused by a large group of submicroscopic agents. Some of these antivirals may be effective in treating the pandemic flu. These drugs may help prevent infection in people at risk and shorten the duration of symptoms in those infected with certain viruses. While we're at it, let's talk about vaccines. Vaccine comes from 
the Latin vaca or cow because of the early use of the cowpox virus against smallpox. Influenza vaccines are designed to protect against specific flu viruses. A specific pandemic influenza vaccine cannot be produced until a pandemic flu virus strain emerges and is identified. Once a pandemic influenza virus has been identified, it will likely take four to six months to develop, test, and begin producing a vaccine. Number, Number three. three, social distancing, community containment, isolation, and quarantine. Isolation separates sick people with a contagious disease from people who are not sick. This process of separating ill people with contagious diseases from non-infected individuals is used to protect non-infected persons and usually occurs in hospital settings but can also be done at home. Quarantine separates and restricts the movement of people who are exposed to contagious disease to see if they become sick. These people may have been exposed to a disease and do not know it, or they may have the disease but do not show symptoms. Quarantine is one of the oldest and most effective tools of controlling communicable disease outbreaks. This public health practice was used widely in the 14th century Italy when ships arriving at the Venice port from plague-infected ports had to anchor and wait for 40 days before disembarking their surviving passengers. In Italian, quaranta means 40, the number of days which provided ample time for the incubation period to be completed so that asymptomatic cases become symptomatic and therefore could be identified. If these measures are deemed to be insufficient, community-wide containment may be implemented. Community containment includes measures that range from increasing social distancing to community-wide quarantine. Across the globe, the impact of measures to control pandemics will depend on addressing various factors. Community-wide containment is an intervention applied to the entire community, city, or region designed to reduce personal interactions, except for minimal interaction to ensure vital supplies. It is a continuum to expand from social distancing to community-wide quarantine with major movement restrictions of everyone. Social distancing measures are taken to limit when and where people can gather to stop or slow the spread of contagious diseases. Social distancing measures include stopping large groups of people from coming together, closing buildings, and canceling events. Number, Number four. four. Hygiene and Sanitation Sanitation is the effective use of tools and actions that keep our environment healthy. These include toilets to manage waste, the way we prepare our foods, the manner we wash our dishes, and the process of draining water. Hygiene, on the other hand, is a set of personal practices that contribute to good health. It includes things like hand washing, brushing our teeth, bathing, cutting hair, and trimming of nails. Hygiene also refers to behaviors that can improve cleanliness and lead to good health, such as frequent hand washing, face washing, and bathing with soap and water. In many areas of the world, practicing personal hygiene etiquette is difficult due to lack of clean water and soap. What happens is that many diseases can be spread if the hands, face, or body are not washed appropriately at key times. Let us remember this. Proper hand washing is the single most important activity we can all do to encourage the stop of any disease. Since sanitizing lowers the number of germs on surfaces or objects at a safe level, this process works by either cleaning or disinfecting surfaces or objects to lower the risk of spreading infection. Remember to not share personal items with a sick person, including eating utensils, cups, clothes, towels, blankets, and bed sheets. On a daily basis, sanitize surfaces and things that are used often or touched, such as doorknobs and handles, light switches, remote controls, and other surfaces that are commonly touched around your home. 
number, number five. five, lockdown, general community quarantine, and enhanced community quarantine. We now know that quarantine separates and restricts the movement of people who are exposed to contagious diseases to see if they become sick. These people may have been exposed to a disease and do not know it, or they may have the disease but do not show symptoms. Which is why some governments enforce what is called the Enhanced Community Quarantine, which covers a larger area of community under quarantine. Modified Community Quarantine, on the other hand, would allow some manufacturing and service industries to resume operations such as export industries, export firms, firms that are exporting products, agricultural work, and agricultural production. General Community Quarantine or GCQ is a form of quarantine with a more relaxed measures compared to the Enhanced Community Quarantine or ECQ. It is usually enforced in provinces and cities considered to have moderate or low risk during a pandemic. A lockdown is a protocol that usually prevents people leaving an area. Lockdowns can also be used to protect people inside a facility or, for example, a regional area from a communicable disease, threat, or other external events. Lockdowns are therefore serious situations enforced during an emergency. Remember, these are public health practices used to protect everyone, so follow the basic rules to prevent exposing yourselves from catching contagious diseases. And there you have it, our part one of the effective communication of English terminologies to protect your family during pandemics. What are some of the confusing English terminologies you have encountered during pandemics? Comment below and keep the conversation moving. If you are new to this channel, click subscribe and hit the bell button below so you are notified when I have newly uploaded videos. Peace out!